everyone, welcome back. You know how much we love to go deep on this show, and today we're diving headfirst into Yuval Noah Harari's Sapiens. Yeah, this book's a big one. It's all about the history of, well, us, uh -huh. Homo sapiens. Right. From pretty humble beginnings to, you know, running the whole show. And I gotta say, getting to the top of the food chain, it wasn't exactly a smooth ride. Harari really makes you think about those early humans, not just picturing cavemen, but like, why them? Right. Like, look at lions, sharks. They became apex predators, but it was a gradual thing, right? Ecosystems adapted. Humans, we were the unexpected meteor strike, changing everything fast. Talk about shaking things up. And I love how Harari points out, we weren't always the biggest or strongest on the block. Early humans, they weren't exactly winning any caveman, strongman contests. Nope, not at all. But then we discovered fire. I don't just mean for warmth, though that was huge. Think cooked food. Totally different ballgame in terms of calories, nutrition, everything. Yeah, I can't imagine trying to convince a caveman to go raw vegan. No way. And that food thing, it wasn't just what we ate. It's how we socialized, gathered, even how our brains developed. It's like fire sparked something deeper, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. Cue the cognitive revolution. It's the game changer in our history, I think. Mm -hmm. Homo sapiens developed this ability. Totally unique. We start talking about things that aren't physically there. Whoa, hold on. So, like, we invented imagination. That's a bit much for this early in the morning, isn't it? It's wild. But think about it. Myths, gods, nations, laws. Mm -hmm. None of that's a rock you can hold or a tree you can climb. It's all in our heads, but we all get on the same page about it. That's the power. Okay, now that you put it that way, it's kind of blowing my mind. So, like, we could all agree on Santa Claus, and boom, suddenly we're cooperating on a global scale. Exactly. That's a simplification but you get the idea. Harari uses this example I love. Picture lawyers from all over, different countries, religions, whatever. They come together to defend some stranger. Why? Uh, because it's the law. I mean, that's their job, right? Sure, but why the law? They all believe in this concept. It's a story we tell ourselves, a social agreement, but it's powerful enough to make people act, even for a stranger. Okay, I see what you mean. It's like, even if we disagree on everything else, if we buy into the same story, we can work together. Like, building pyramids, starting revolutions, writing a constitution, all that jazz. Bingo. This capacity for shared beliefs, even if they're fictional, it's what let us build civilizations. But, like with any good story, there's a twist coming. And this one involves, wait for it, wheat. Well, wheat! Okay, now we're really going off script. What's so special about wheat? breadsticks. I mean, I like them, but come on. Not just breadsticks, my friend. The agricultural revolution. Mm. This is where things get really interesting. Because at first glance, farming sounds like pure progress, right? Yeah, no more chasing gazelles for dinner. Sign me up. So what's the catch? There's got to be a catch. Oh, there's a catch. Picture this. A young girl, ancient China, spends all day hunched over planting rice. Her diet, rice mostly. Her health, not great. Harari argues she's probably worse off than her hunter-gatherer ancestors. Oh, wow. That's not the happy ending I was expecting. So we traded freedom for food security and got a worse deal in the process. In a way, yeah. We became tied to the land at the mercy of the weather. Diseases spread easier. We domesticated weed, but you could argue it domesticated us right back. That's a scary thought. Being outsmarted by a grain. I mean, I knew carbs were powerful, but come on. But there had to be some upsides, right? Oh, absolutely. Agriculture, for all its flaws, allowed for huge populations, cities, eventually empires. Except the win-win we usually think it was. So, kind of a Faustian bargain then. Trade a little freedom for civilization and a side of existential dread with your bread. Pretty much. But that need to keep track of all that grain, all those people, that led to something else pretty major. Writing. Okay, now we're talking. But wait, I thought early writing was all epic poems and love letters. Not quite. Think more along the lines of... Bob owes 15 bushels of barley. Super exciting stuff. I know, right? You crack the code of some ancient tablet expecting wisdom, and it's basically an IOU. But here's the thing. Even those boring lists, they were revolutionary. Okay, so how do we get from grain spreadsheets to, like, the Library of Alexandria? It's about what writing represents. Suddenly, we could keep track of so much. Not just grain, but debts, laws, taxes. That complexity, it's what allowed for bigger, more organized societies. So basically, bureaucracy is humanity's superpower. I'm not sure that's going to make it onto too many motivational posters. Maybe not, but it's true. Think about it. Without writing, no legal codes, no libraries, no history books, we'd still be telling stories around the campfire, hoping someone remembered the punchline. Okay, yeah, I get it. Writing's pretty important. Yeah. And Harari's point is, this whole shift towards 
systems, organizing information, that's never really gone away, has it? Not one bit. It's everywhere. Governments, corporations, your phone's operating system, it's all built on this foundation of writing, of managing information. Wow, it's kind of creepy when you think about it. Like, our entire world runs on paperwork, even the digital kind. But uh, Harari doesn't stop there, does he? He goes full sci-fi on us by the end, right? He does. Because if we follow this trajectory where humans are always pushing boundaries, well, he asks, what's next? What happens when we can engineer our biology, merge with machines? Are we still even homo sapiens then? Oh, okay, yeah. Now we're getting into some Black Mirror territory. It's like, where do you draw the line between human and something else? It's a question that's going to get more and more relevant, I think. But before we spiral into an existential crisis, let's back up a bit, because Harari makes this point about progress that's super interesting. For most of human history, economic growth, it was basically flatlined. Okay, so like empires rose and fell, but nobody was really getting ahead. Exactly. The pie never got bigger, just sliced different ways. Then boom, the scientific revolution happens, and suddenly growth isn't just possible, it's expected. So it's not just about new inventions, it's a whole new mindset. Like, we can make the future better. Exactly. And that idea, it's at the heart of what we call capitalism. Okay, whoa, whoa. Capitalism. That word can get a little loaded. Maybe let's unpack that a bit for those of us who haven't exactly been reading our Adam Smith. Fair enough. At its core, capitalism is this idea. You take the profits from production and you reinvest them to make even more. It's a cycle of, like, let's bake a bigger cake instead of just Bye. fighting over the slices. Okay, I like cake analogies. So instead of just accepting there's only so much to go around, capitalism's like, hold my beer, watch this. <laughs> Pretty much. And key to that is credit. Because you have to believe the future's going to be more prosperous to take out loans, to invest. So credit, it's not just about borrowing, it's about believing tomorrow's going to be awesome. Exactly. And that's something European nations really tapped into. They weren't always the richest, but they were willing to take risks to bet on the future. While everyone else was courting gold, Europe's out there like, we'll pay you back later, promise. Now about funding this expedition to who knows where. And look, that expansion led to some really dark stuff. Colonization, slavery. Yeah. Uh, we can't forget that. But it also set the stage for the Industrial Revolution even more change. And now, here we are facing a future where humans themselves may be the thing that changes most radically. It's a lot, right? On one hand, crazy tech possibilities. On the other, are we going to lose what makes us, well, us? It's like if we can literally reprogram our own biology, are we still playing God or have we become him? Big questions. And Harari doesn't pretend to have all the answers. But he does say this. This potential end to Homo sapiens it's not necessarily bad. It might just be a transition to something beyond what we can even imagine right now. Okay, that's either reassuring or terrifying, depending on how much coffee I've had. But if we're talking about transcending our limits, the real question is, what do we want that to look like? And more importantly, will it make us happy? I mean, it's easy to think more progress equals more happiness, right? Like, that's the goal, right? Get the cool future tech, then we'll be happy. But Harari kind of throws a wrench in that whole idea. He really does. Because for all we've accomplished, are we any closer to figuring out happiness? It's not exactly an equation we've solved, you know? Right. It's not like, achieve world peace, then check the happiness box. So what's the deal then? It's got to be more than just, like, stuff, right? It's way more than stuff. Turns out, happiness, it's less about what we have and more about what we expect. Like, how big is the gap between the life we think we should have and the one we're actually living? Okay, so if my expectations are super low and life's just kind of meh, I'm winning. Not exactly low, but you're onto something. It's about how well those expectations line up with reality. Problem is, we're bombarded with these perfect lives, you know? Social media, movies, whatever. Makes it hard not to compare. Don't even get me started on social media. It's like everyone else is living their best life while I'm over here just trying to find matching socks. No wonder we're all so stressed out. Exactly. That constant comparison game, it can actually backfire. We get more stuff, our lives might objectively be better, but we're still not happy because we're always focused on what we don't have. So we're kind of wired wrong then, chasing external validation when it's really an inside job. Kinda. And this is where it gets really interesting when you think about bioengineering, AI. Mm. What happens when we can tweak our bodies, our minds, mm -hmm. to be however we want? Will we just find new ways to be unhappy? Okay, now we're getting existential again. It's like that whole be careful what you wish for thing, but on a like species-wide level. Right. It's a real concern. If we can literally design our own desires, 
What happens to happiness then? Do we just chase an even bigger carrot forever? So are we doomed? Is happiness just this myth we tell ourselves while we invent new ways to suffer? Not necessarily, Yeah. but it takes a different approach. Harari talks about this idea of inner contentment. And no, it's not about sitting in a cave chanting while the world burns. It's about finding peace within yourself, regardless of what's going on outside. Okay, so less about the corner office, more about appreciating, like, a good cup of coffee in the morning. It's exactly. Gratitude, yeah. compassion, finding meaning in what you do, those things. That's where lasting happiness comes from, not just chasing the next dopamine hit. That's actually kind of beautiful, but also kind of daunting, you know? Like, changing our whole outlook on everything. It's a journey, for sure. But think about it. If we're really on the verge of reshaping humanity, shouldn't inner peace be part of the blueprint? Otherwise, we're just building a faster race car for a track that's going nowhere. That's a powerful image and a good place to wrap things up, I think. We've gone from the dawn of humanity to, well, maybe the dawn of something new. And if there's one thing we've learned from Sapiens, it's that the future is not pre-programmed. It's up to us to write the next chapter. So keep learning, keep asking the big questions, and most importantly, thanks for joining us on this deep dive.